people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome back to another FNAF news video. This time we're back talking about updates to Security Breach. You may have seen last month the console versions of Security Breach, PS5, PS4 got a major update. And thankfully, we finally got some patch notes as well as a few more updates from Steel Wool on patches for Security Breach, a little tease for maybe some Xbox ports, and a very quick update on the Ruin DLC for the game coming next year. So if you're excited about the brand new update, hit the like button. If you're new, subscribe because we cover FNAF news just all the gosh dang time. And subscribing is the best way to guarantee you stay up to date with all the FNAF news going on. So wasting absolutely zero more time during this intro, let's talk about the post. So yesterday, Steerwall released a brand new post to their news website saying updates from the studio and notes for patch 1.11. And of course, I would be remiss if I forgot to mention the adorable helpy drawing. He's got a fly swatter, he's swatting away all those bugs. So the post says, hey everyone, we have been busy over here at Steel Wool and now is a good time to give you a few updates on what's been happening. A couple weeks ago, we pushed a new patch for the console version of Security Breach. A patch contained a whole bunch of fixes, but was specifically released in order to add Japanese localization to support the launch of our physical version in Japan. The reason we hadn't released patch notes until now is because we wanted to add a few more fixes that were cut off due to the hard deadline. At the bottom of this post is a list of the changes and fixes that went into both that patch and the one we're currently releasing. As you'll see, this is a non-trivial release for us. Given the size of this patch and the previous major patch, we are generally content with the game as it currently stands. But we know it can always be better. There will be other patches in the future, they're just not likely to be as major as the ones you've seen. Hey, so let's quickly talk about this text that we just read out loud. First up, uh, I wanna- I wanna talk about this. So they say right here that they're pretty good with how the game is as of right now, and that we shouldn't expect any major patches in the future, you know, that are on the level of this patch or the one we saw uh, back in late February. And I think a lot of people have jumped to conclusions with this statement because this isn't the last patch, right? They say right here, there will be other patches in the future, they're just not going to be as major. And also people attacking Steerwall saying that they're you know, generally content with how the game is as of right now. And those are the same people who are like, ah, but we want more Vanny. You know, you guys got to go through, you got to fix the lore. You got to adjust this whole section of the game. I want more of this character. I want less of this. It's like, it's very difficult for Steel Wool to address, I'd say, the major complaints, like the lack of lore, the lack of Vanny, the lack of what have you, without going through and changing absolutely major points of the game. That's just impossible to do in a patch. I don't think we're going to see any new any new lore in these patches. We're definitely not going to see any new Vanny appearances throughout these patches. Like stuff like that just can't be can't be added in a simple patch. And I think the reason why they're so content as it is right now is because again, like I said, you can't just go through and add major stuff like that without altering the game significantly. But I also think that they're going to take the Ruin DLC, which again, we're going to talk about uh, in the next text. That's going to be their opportunity to add in more stuff that people, uh, you know, the initial launch of Security Breach were like, hey, I want more of this. Again, I want more Vanny more lore. I think that's what the Ruin DLC is going to be all about. Anyways, continuing on, next we should probably talk about the gold and busted Glamrock Freddy statue in the room. Over the last few months, we've begun our full development push on our upcoming DLC, FNAF Security Breach Ruin. There's not much to share at this point other than we're working hard and are very excited to share more as soon as the time is right. It's worth saying that while there will always be skeptics, as there absolutely should be, the response has been overwhelmingly positive and your excitement has put smiles on all of our faces here at the studio. We get hyped when you do, and it reminds us why we love doing what we do. So that's the quick update on the Ruin DLC. They can't share much right now, but they're working very hard on it. I think that's going to be their major focus now, now that they're done with these major patches for the main game. So hopefully sometime, I'd assume towards the end of the summer, maybe going into the fall, we can hear more about the DLC. Lastly, I need a shill for the merch store. We launched at the beginning of the month. We have big plans for our store in the future, 
But for the month of June, we have created our first limited edition Pride Month merchandise. We cannot say this enough, but all net proceeds from the sales from this month are donated to charity. Keep an eye out on our social feeds as we'll be introducing more uh, merchandise for the whole community to enjoy. That's it for now, but you'll be hearing from us again in the not too distant future with another exciting announcement, something many of you have been waiting for. Thanks again for taking the time uh, to keep up to date with what's going on. We we couldn't do it without you. Ray McCaffrey, the executive producer. Ray, thank you so much. And yeah, there's another exciting announcement coming very soon. Something that many of you have been waiting for. Now, if you ask me, I definitely do think that this has to be the Xbox. There's just no way they're hyping something up this much and it's not the Xbox ports. I mean, so many people have been asking for it. And now we move on to the actual patch notes, which, um... I don't know if you guys have actually taken a look at the post yourselves, but there was, a, there was a lot of patch. Oh my god, it keeps going. Holy crap, it's still going. Oh my gosh, it's still going. There it is. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna go through some major ones, and if I also have some footage from the new update, I'll also put that in the video. But this entire blog post will be linked down in the description, so if you want to go through, read all the patch notes, please feel free to do so. First up, we have changes across all the platforms. Starting a new game will no longer overwrite the last loaded manual save. A bunch of controls can now be uh, remapped to various buttons on your keyboard and mouse and stuff like that. Updated the subtitle system to display multiple dialogue simultaneously so if there's two characters talking at the same time it'll just stack them right on top of each other added camera posters in key areas added camera assets to roughly reflect the faz watch's camera's positions updated the thrill seekers uh, mission objective use the maser size controls to now complete upon entering the vent to gator golf updated the dumpster diving mission objective find out how to de uh, decommission chica to now complete upon acquiring the mystery mix duffel bag Updated the Monty Mystery Mix mission objective to now complete upon collecting the bowling ticket. This one's interesting. Removed tables and chair assets, collisions of the plush shapes and noisemakers in order to allow the daycare attendant to traverse the daycare play area without getting stuck. So they removed a whole bunch of objects in the actual play area because it seems like the daycare attendant can't really move around all too well when they constantly get stuck on tables and chairs. Updated Roxy's pathing in the raceway, updated Vanny's patrol pathing in her boss battle. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter confused about what that boss battle is. It's after Freddy dies, you know, he gets pushed off and disassembled by the, the, the staff bots. And we have to go up through the, the Fazer Blast catwalks over to Vanny's hideout, push the button, that's her boss battle. Optimized some poly count on the endos, added in more Vanny audio files for a variety of lines to play when encountering her in Lost and Found. So it looks like Vanny has a chance of saying some more voice lines when you encounter her in <laughs> Lost and Found. Added in color indicator for the Fazer Blast flags to turn blue when the player captures it, and return to green if the enemy alien bots capture it. This one I'm not a fan of. Added in more staff bots to patrol after the player acquires the security upgrade from the Gator Golf office. I don't like that at all. I'll be honest, I really don't like that. I don't think we need more staff bots patrolling around. Uh, who knows, this might just be in the Gator Golf area. I don't know. But if it's the entire Pizzaplex, I'm not a fan of that. Added in some animations for the endos. Uh, Chica now enters hunt mode if she sees the player in the hallway during the burn trap wave. Updated animatronics to be stunnable in the burn trap boss battle. Looks like some ray tracing got updated. Some lighting in some areas like El Chip's kitchen and the parts and service have been updated. Environmental fog has been added in for a bit more ambiance. It looks like when you boot up the game uh, for the first time, you get a set your brightness, contrast, etc. option. So you can just get those settings right out of the way, right off the gate. Added in additional loading screens across uh, several areas of the map, primarily PS4 and lower spec PCs. I'm kind of iffy about this one. On one hand, it's more loading screens, which for a, you know, a free roam game isn't something you really want. But seeing as it is for lower end devices, I don't think it's that much, you know, I don't think it's a big deal. Updated Freddy's Mesh, uh, updated the Faz Watch to indicate the party pass quantity. That was actually in one of the trailers, so it looks like they're bringing that back. Updated the collectible categories in the game, removed the security badge instruction card after the first one's been collected, removed the autosave occurring at the start of the daycare attendant's hunt when the party pass is collected, added in some additional Freddy dialogue for uh, certain events, always love that, love my man's Freddy, comedy bot, 
is now sporting a lovely suit and bowler hat. I don't know if it's mentioned here, but Magician Bot is also now in the game. Updated some lighting, updated some UI text, added new randomized elevator dialogues. These were the once uh, scrapped Faz facts. So when you're in the elevator, randomly you'll just hear a nice little fun fact, you know, a little Faz fact from Dreadbear. Could be anything. It could be about pizza. I know there's one about bears being extinct, some birthday parties coming true at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Plex. Adjusted timing when Freddy opens the vent at the end of the backstage office game to be almost immediate. I love that. Had some issues with him not showing up for like two minutes at some points. It's, it can be crazy. Added in title screen and updated all game over screens with new assets for Princess Quest 1, 2, and 3. Updated some Gregory dialogue. Players can no longer press buttons early during the memory sequence of parts and service. Mazer size modules now have their position saved when the player reloads their saves. Steerwall, that is just the most brain dead decision I've seen. Oh my god, why? I know I'm not the only one who doesn't like the Mazer size puzzle. It's it's so finicky. You can accidentally hit the wrong button so easily. And reloading your save is one of the only ways that you can reset it. So the fact that they removed that is just, it's really painful. I really hope they actually go through and fix the collision on some of the buttons with the, with that minigame because my god, it is just so annoying, it's so finicky. So please, Steel Wall, if you're gonna do this, at least fix some collision. Players can now toggle the stealth indicator on or off and added in indicator audio when the player picks up Monty's claws. These are all the changes for PC. Added language support for Japanese. Updated some UI icons when you're using a Xbox controller on PC. Added in some more video options. Adjusted some mission hitboxes on the Faz Watch. Some more hitbox updates and also some performance updates when you have RTX on. These are all your changes for PlayStation 4. Looks like most of it is CPU performance as well as some haptic feedback on your controller. And these are your changes for PS5. Same thing, performance updates and also some haptic feedback. Finally, we get to the bugs. And I know I said I'd only pick out certain ones from the across all platforms changes, and then I proceeded to not do that and read out basically every single change. But with the bug fixes, I'm not gonna do that. Once again, the post will be linked down below. If you want to go read through all of these bug fixes, be my guest. I'm not gonna do that in this video. Are you kidding me? I'm still scrolling. I'm still scrolling. It's still going. There it is. It was the end of that. If you want to go through, have a look at these bug fixes, again, be my guest. It'll be linked down below. But this was, this was the entirety of the post. And what seems to be the last major update for Security Breach. I talked about it a bit when we read uh, the first uh, couple paragraphs, but that's it. That, that seems to be the final major update for the game. Seems like the rest of the updates are going to be pretty small, addressing maybe some smaller bug fixes and changes, but this is it. I'll, I'll say it a third time. You know what? I'm going to say it a fourth time. This is it. It looks like from this point forward, the Ruin DLC is going to be their main focus, which I'm fine with. I think people often undervalue just how much uh, changes and bug fixes Steel Wool has, has made for the game. You can tell they definitely do care. Whether or not they miss the mark with this entire game, that's up to you to decide for yourself, but I think, like, you can't argue that they don't care. Because they've spent the past, you know, half a year fixing this game, making it the best experience it can be. Again, there are some things you just can't change, you know, that you just can't add in in a simple patch without completely going through and restructuring the game. So I really hope if this truly is the final major update, that the Ruin DLC is going to fix a lot of the complaints that people had with the OG game. Better lore, more character appearances, specifically Vanny if she does show up, all that stuff. And of course, less bugs. That's gonna do it for this FNAF News video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.